This is a basic introduction on the construction of diagrams and how the elements of diagrams can be used to communicate the message from the author to the reader. In the physical sciences, a diagram is often a visual representation of the properties of objects and their movement through space and time. Because objects are seldom isolated or static, the diagrams also represent the interaction between the objects, the physical processes behind those interactions, as well as the initial and final states. The construction of a diagram starts with its statement. What is it that the reader should learn from your diagram? The statement usually included as the descriptive caption for the diagram can be a simple description that merely states the initial and final states without regard to the physics behind the interactions. This approach emphasizes the observations. Alternately, one can focus the descriptive caption on the conclusion. In this case, one would describe the interaction based on the physical processes that are highlighted by the diagram. For each object involved, you will want to have a visual representation of that object. If the object is moving, emitting something, exerting a force, you will also want to represent their change through the environment or their interaction with the use of arrows. If the property has a relevant magnitude, you will want to represent that by changing the size of the representation. In this example, the property of mass is represented by changing the size of the circle representing the object. The magnitude of the velocity can also be represented by changing the size of the arrow. A 
if the focus is on the physical process of the interaction, you will want to include that in your diagram. Alternately, if the relevant lesson is about the initial and final states, you will want to split your diagram into the discrete time events. It is important to label your diagram with the properties and behavior you are trying to represent. If you have a specific numeric example you are describing or explaining, include those numerics with units in the diagram. For more general descriptions or focus on the physics, you will want to keep your labels generic. Finally, as a warning, do not overcrowd your diagrams with either pictural representations or labels. Always put yourself in the mind of the reader what they need to learn and what is the easiest way for them to read the conclusion from your diagram.